This week in Seven Days of Science, a giant space snowman is revealed not to be a giant space snowman. Coronavirus is still a thing, some dinosaur news, and some more dinosaur news. Starting off the news this week, a team at Warwick University have said that they have discovered a giant cosmic object shaped like a giant snowman. Viewers must not be alarmed at this fact, however, as it was not a giant snowman, but instead two colliding white dwarf stars. This is not a common cosmic event, and Dr. Mark Hollands has said that observing this occurrence could help our understanding of how this occurs and how sometimes star mergers can result in powerful supernovas. He also remarked that the earlier readings of the composition of the star didn't make any sense, as it was too rich in carbon, leading to the researchers to conclude that the star must be a merging of two separate white dwarf stars. In other news, the coronavirus continues to spread throughout the world and cause more deaths as governments prepare to combat the disease. The main line from officials, however, and one that we would like to echo, is not to panic. Be careful and vigilant and follow the advice of your respective government. One of the main pieces of advice being given to the public by the UK government is to regularly wash hands. The BBC recently put up a video on how to wash your hands properly and efficiently, so we'll be leaving that in the description. It may seem silly, but it's important to do things properly in these times. And now over to Ben, who has some news. Thanks, Doug. Starting this week's particularly exciting dinosaur news is a recent study which has examined the possibility of extinct non-bird dinosaurs possessing photoluminescent display structures. Recent discoveries have found that all sorts of living vertebrates are actually photoluminescent, meaning certain tissues or even organs are visible to animals with ultraviolet sensitive vision. This includes the beaks of birds such as puffins, the bones of chameleons, and even parts of amphibians. In this recent paper, the researchers explain how since living reptiles, including birds, have UV-sensitive vision, it's very likely that extinct dinosaurs and even pterosaurs did too. And, coupled with the extravagant display structures found in many of these animals, it's not too unreasonable to consider that some of these extinct creatures may have looked completely different to other dinosaurs and pterosaurs that could see parts of the UV range. Such features are proposed to have perhaps played a role in visual displays within and between species in the Mesozoic. It's a really fascinating idea and hopefully, as the paper encourages, more research and testing into this possibility can be done in the future. Also in the news is an interesting study which seems to have discovered evidence of proteins, chromosomes and chemical markers of DNA in some fossilised dinosaur cartilage. The specimen in question is a section from a late Cretaceous-aged Hypacrosaurus stebingeri nestling found in Montana, and looking at this fossil the researchers involved saw what appear to be preserved microstructures resembling cells, and even what looks like condensed chromosomes. This level of preservation at a subcellular scale is something that's never really been reported from vertebrate fossils before, and excitingly, when the researchers applied DNA binding stains to the specimen, some of it bound inside the isolated cells, indicating the possibility that nuclear material that did indeed belong to this dinosaur may have survived fossilization. However, the paleontologists are cautious about saying they definitely have preserved DNA here, and for good reason since things get a little more complicated. The structures could still just be a fossil byproduct of broken down genetic material, or if it really is DNA, it won't be a lot, only a few chemically altered fragments. But this is still a remarkable discovery that shows this molecule may be a bit tougher than we had assumed, able to survive in small pieces for potentially millions of years in the right conditions. The paper explains how the fact that the specimen is cartilage, not bone, probably helped in the exceptional preservation of the cells, since cartilage is less porous than bone and could have protected the biomolecules better, and that if the DNA was altered by cross-linking with itself or binding to histone proteins, this could have helped it to survive. Anyway, it will be interesting to see if future studies can tell if this really is preserved DNA or if it's something else, but it's nevertheless a fascinating paper. Also, full disclosure, Jack Horner is one of the authors of the study, so uh, make of that what you will. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. By the way, do you want to play some Sims tonight? Uh, no, I've uninstalled it. I can't really be bothered to reinstall it. Okay, maybe some Civ? Oh, I've just remembered I've got to do something. Bye! Right, okay, yes. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Seven Days of Science. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.